Hello out to all you wonderful people. This is Andre, the Game Idea Guy. Thank you once again for lending me your time and your ear listening into another What If From Me. And I originally had a different one planned for this week, but that one's going to take me a little bit more thought process because uh, when I started it, I started to accidentally mix up some of my details and I don't like, <laughs> like when I do that. So... I'm putting that one in the back burner for something I can think about relatively quickly and put together in a more concise manner than what I was going to do. But that what if will be out next week. This one that you are looking at the title of and probably sitting there like, Andre, seriously, you don't have to do this. Like, you really, truly don't have to do this because the opposite is exactly true. But that's the reason I do what ifs, because these are situations that I can analyze that have not happened. And I can analyze how they would have happened based on information I have or based on things that I know. Well, based on information I have, as well as past events and how things have gone before outside of my uh, what if I worked on Street Fighter 4 videos like because those are entirely me making stuff up <laughs> i mean it's based off of the lore from street fighter but most of it's entirely me making stuff up so like that that separates those a little bit and the one next week is also going to be a little bit like that it's not exactly the same but it's gonna be close to that so what if the nintendo switch was not a popular device now again like i said People were going to say, yeah, you didn't have to do this. But I'm going to add one caveat to this. The Switch isn't popular. But it gets all of the games it's getting currently. Meaning it's still getting third party support. That is what makes this situation interesting. So. Here's my thinking. Firstly. Many of the YouTubers who champion the hell out of the Switch after ridiculing the Nintendo Wii U would not be on the bandwagon for the Nintendo Switch. Not in the least. And now, like, I'm even talking about the ones that, in passing, will complain about the power of the Switch and all that stuff. They would not be backing the Switch. They would not be behind the Switch at all. And they would be hypercritical of it, pointing out every little error that it has. And there are some people who do that and do analysis of it. That's a completely separate situation. That's not the same thing. When you're doing an analysis of something, you're going to have to see the negatives in it. But the people who are championing it right now, who are like behind it 100%, go Nintendo Switch, get all those third-party games and stuff, they would hate this machine. And mostly it's because it's Nintendo. That's why they would hate it. The reason that they love it is because it's popular. The reason that they would hate it is because it's Nintendo and it's not popular. And that would be the thing. And we would see a lot of that on YouTube where there would be a ton of people bashing it and talking about how worthless it is. And granted me, my thought process, there is not a worthless console, but there are some that have been completely mishandled. And that is different from saying something's worthless. Even a virtual boy has some worth to it. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying this. But um, going forward with that and thinking about that. All of that that I'm looking at with people who are like, Oh, Nintendo Switch is the greatest thing ever. I play all of my games on it. Or I'll wait for a Switch version and all that stuff. They wouldn't be that. They wouldn't be like that. And then the people who want a Nintendo Switch Pro, not saying everybody, but a good majority of them, would also be in the same boat. Like man, like man, fuck Nintendo. Like they can't even put out a decent console. They can't put out nothing that we that's worthwhile to get. Bar, bearing in mind that what makes a console great isn't the hardware behind it. I mean, yes, that does contribute to it. But what makes a console great, a great platform, is the software lineup on it. The games that you can play on it. The experiences that you can have on it. And 
with that in mind, you could say every platform currently is great because there are great titles in all of them. Some shared, some not. But based upon popularity, certain ones are perceived better than others. And currently, Nintendo is potentially perceived the best, even with the shortcomings of the Switch, where it lacks features that even the Wii U had, or even the Wii had. But, even still, the Switch is a great device, and that's because of the gaming software that's on it. And I will always advocate that. (laughs) It's not because of the graphics, it's not because of frame rates or any of that stuff is because of the games and if anybody wants to argue that they can argue it against the wall because that's my that is my opinion that was always going to be my opinion when it comes down to gaming but that being said i could see that this machine lifetime sales if it wasn't popular lifetime sales it probably wouldn't get above 20 million if it was unpopular. I mean, Nintendo has exceeded that now, but if it was unpopular, lifetime sales would not exceed 20 million. I don't even know if it, like, if it was unpopular, I do believe it would have surpassed the Wii U because there are people who are, again, like me, who would get one regardless. And they don't care about whether or not it's popular. But the vast majority of those sales that came in in that rush once this thing was coming out, like... It wouldn't have broken those sales records. It wouldn't have had the media jump, jumping, uh, chomping at the bit to go ahead and say, oh man, Nintendo's done this, Nintendo's done that, and all these great things. Gaming media would be slamming the hell out of Nintendo right now. We're like, well, one failed console right behind the other. What's wrong with you, Nintendo? What you doing wrong? And that is the perception that would have been given. Granted, I do think that there's even unpopular Nintendo would have still had the best software to hardware ratio. They <laughs> they still would have made a crap ton of money on this because I don't think that they overdid it with their spending. And they still would be able to move on to another platform with another set of ideas behind that. And they would still be working on their next project like they are currently if people don't want to believe that. Like, no, Nintendo is working on their next platform. And this is something that they have confirmed before, that they work on their next platform once one launches. They may not start working on the physical side of things, but they work on their concepts and strategies and ideas as to what they want the next one to be. Just wanted to put that one out there. I know there are a lot of people that forget that. And I will remind them at every turn if I have to. (laughs) But that being said... If the popularity wasn't there, and Nintendo still got the games, like I said, they still got the games, this would be the opportunity for third parties to say, well, we put our games out on the system, they didn't do well, and there's no reason for us to support the next Nintendo platform. We gave this one a chance, and we're going to bow out. The next platform, they are fully by themselves. And that is a very interesting concept because that is a Nintendo I kind of want to see where they literally have no third party support or less than what the Wii U had. See, the Wii U may have had dwindling third party support, but it still had some third party support. If we got to a point where there was no third party support whatsoever, Nintendo's value would rest on their own shoulders. And interestingly enough, I think that they could pull it off. And I think that they would be able to hammer out during that point in time that they would be able to hammer out a bunch of great titles, a bunch of surprising titles, bring in new IPs and turn and take some IPs and work on them in different ways. See, that's the interesting thing is we we haven't seen Nintendo with their backs truly against the wall. And I guess that's why this concept appeals to me, because I would really like to see that. And there are plenty of people in the gaming industry who say don't doubt Nintendo and they say it fervently. And then I look at it, I'm like, huh, 
So that's an interesting concept. So if the Switch was not popular, they capped out at maybe 20 million units. The next platform, whatever it's called, Switch 2 or whatever Nintendo decides it to be, they come out the door swinging with one title for each one of their popular franchises within a year. So we do get a game that is as popular as Zelda Breath of the Wild or as popular as Super Mario Odyssey, as popular as Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, as popular as Super Mario Maker 2 is going to be. We end up with those games. And this is where I believe that we would see a Nintendo that we have never experienced where, again, like I said, they will be dropping bomb after bomb after bomb after bomb. And I think that if the Switch wasn't popular, by the time this phantom console that I'm talking about came about, they would be back into popularity so fast. And then they would probably do something that has, as far as my knowledge, never been done in the industry. And they would sell roughly a third of what the PS2's lifetime sales were in a year. And you're probably wondering, like, how did you come up with this number? The thing is, it's a gut feeling I have. It's not something that I can quantify. But like, and yeah, like it's a, a number off the top of my head. But at the same time, I see it viably possible. Because, again, we know Nintendo is very capable of pulling out all the stops when they really, truly want to. When they really, truly want to show their behinds to the world, they can. And they kind of did it with the Switch. But this was following the Wii U being an unpopular console. Not necessarily a complete commercial failure because, again, they made money on it. They didn't make as much as they wanted, but they made money on it. But if the Switch was unpopular, they probably not... I mean, they would still make money, but they probably wouldn't make as much as they're doing right now because the Switch is like printing money for them. And if it wasn't popular, they would find themselves in a situation where they have had two unpopular platforms in a row. And that is not something Nintendo has ever had to deal with. That's why there's a curiosity in me that wants to see that. I don't. At the same time, I I want to see it. I don't because I do care about the company and and want them to be successful. But to see them have two unpopular platforms in a row would really be an interesting situation. And that's why I think they would go back to old, like they would have one a game for each one of their popular franchises within the first year. They would go back to a lot of their older IPs and start bringing those back and reworking how the mechanics and stuff work. So we'd probably end up with a new Wrecking Crew game. We'd end up with a new Balloon Fight and many others that we have not seen a new iteration for in some time. There'd be a new Excite Bike and, and plenty of other game games that we have not seen. And that, in a way, kind of excites me. Like, it's like I would be looking forward to that because I would know that they are pulling the stops out for no one. They would be working so hard to make sure that they impressed everybody. And they may go over to the dark side a little bit and worry about making sure there's a graphical powerhouse this platform uh, this phantom platform but all of the games well maybe not all of them but the majority of the games would likely be amazing and probably something that even i couldn't think of right off the bat and i think of a lot of different things (laughs) so like that's that's for me like that's me saying something is in the belief of my belief in their capabilities as developers I think that they would come out swinging so hard that Sony and Microsoft would would be just flabbergasted and all the third parties that backed away from them would probably be back in by the second year of the life of this platform. Because again, I believe it would exceed sales records 
just based off Nintendo's hard work. And no, we would not have all the games, but all those games that it has that the Switch has. But I mean, they would have their games, and yes, they would have indies because indies do well on Nintendo, like no matter what. There is no way indies don't do well on Nintendo. Like you hear indies talk about how much money they've made on the Switch over making money on the PC on Steam. When Steam potentially has way, like Steam has way more users than the Switch can actively have currently. (laughs) And even back during the Wii U, they were talking about how much money they were making on the platform as opposed to Steam and Xbox and Sony. So that that's that there's nothing there's nothing that they can there's no way I, I, I see them not doing well with indies. That that's just that's my basic point. Uh but it's it's just an awesome thought experience experiment to think about a Nintendo that has had two unpopular platforms in a row. Two platforms they they couldn't turn around and gain any sort of popularity with. And what type of situation and what type of thinking that would lead to for them as a company. That interests me so much because I'm like I I think that they would double down on their core philosophies and just pump out that much more content. And they would probably hire on more teams. And have more small teams working. They will have more teams working on smaller games that could fill in the gaps between big releases and stuff like that. And while that is happening and all the major releases are being worked up to and stuff, and they would have a ton of really good games, whether they are made by small teams or not. I think they would have a crap ton of really good exclusive games and nobody would be able to touch this library of games for this particular platform. So that's my thoughts on that. Like, <laughs> oh, like, and it, like, that's why I said this interest, the situation was interesting to me, like, but I, I can't really go run the gambit too much more in this. Cause there's not a whole lot that I can really say about it. It's a very, very hypothetical situation. And it's something I don't see likely to happen, but it is something that is interesting to me. And I think you guys would be interested in it as well. So down below, tell me what your thoughts are on this, this theoretical situation that I just presented to you about the, about Nintendo and the switch being unpopular. Go ahead and say what you think would happen. Like you don't have to agree with me. So this is why I'm saying, go ahead and say what you want to say below Tell me what you think would happen, how you see the scenario going, and where you think Nintendo would go next from the, from a disappointing popularity for the Switch. That's it. Thank you guys very much for listening. Keep your eyes and ears out for more stuff from me. And until the next time, enjoy your games. Peace out.